right, so this video is the bonding and structure fact test. Okay. Now, um, solids, liquids and gases occurs quite often and we have sort of different tables to do with them. So it says describe the three states of matter. So solid arrangement of particles is regular. Liquid, they are random and gas are also random. The movement of particles. In a solid, they vibrate around a fixed point. I might actually put a line across my F. Liquids, what they do is they move around each other. Okay, they're kind of slipping and sliding over top of each other. Right. Gas, the movement of particles, is they move quickly, randomly, in all directions. Close to some particles. Solid particles are very close together. Liquids are close. Gases are far apart. Where do we find the subatomic? So sub means basically smaller than the atom itself. Protons are in the nucleus. Electrons can be found in the shells. And the neutrons can also be found in the nucleus. Okay, so you've got the nucleus, which is the middle bit, right, where the protons and neutrons are, and then the shells going around the outside. Draw an ion of sodium. Okay, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Na, and I'm going to go Na, because I know what it is. And up here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to practice a minute. Right, so I'm going to draw the first shell. Now, I know that sodium is 2311Na, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pen, P, E, N, so protons is 11, electrons is 11, neutrons is 12, because 23 take away 11 is 12. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my electrons on. Okay, I'm going to go one, two, draw another circle because two of those 11 have already gone in. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's 10 electrons gone. So I need another shell with one electron in it. Okay, so that's what sodium looks like. Now what I'm going to do on this is I'm actually just going to do the outer electron. So there's just one outer electron there. I've then got my iron, right? And now what sodium wants to do, it either wants to gain seven electrons, that's a seven, or it wants to lose one, right? And the common sense is the fact that it's going to lose one because that's easier. So it loses. So now in that outer shell now, it's got no electrons at all. And what you do, you draw your square bracket around the outside of it. And because it's lost one negative, then that means it's got more positives, so it becomes a plus one. List the three main properties of ionic compounds. Property number one is they have high melting and boiling point. Okay, so that basically means you have to heat them up a lot. They do not conduct electricity when solid and the third one is they do conduct electricity electricity when molten or dissolved Okay. Good idea of that is uh, common table salt, right? Common table salt, you try and heat it up, it takes a lot of energy to melt it or boil it. It doesn't conduct electricity when solid, so if you tried to pass electricity through it in your, on your worktop at home, you wouldn't be able to do it. But if you can heat it up or dissolve it, it will then conduct electricity. So a good example is NaCl, and an ionic compound is a metal and a non-metal. Draw the dot and cross of carbon dioxide. So what we're now doing is we're now talking about covalent. 
okay? Because carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is also a non-metal. Now, I'm going to kind of cheat here. I'm not going to kind of do the working out, right? But what I'm going to do is I know that carbon's got four electrons in its outer shell. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and that's carbon. Now, because I've cheated, I know that oxygen is going to appear there, and oxygen's got six in its outer shell. So the oxygen electrons are going to be one, two, three, four. It's got two there already. Five, six, seven, eight, and that's oxygen. On the other side, I'm going to draw another oxygen, and I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and an oxygen in the middle. Now, what you've got to do now is you've got to just think about the question. Now, I've done it wrong, right? So you now think about what it's got to be. It says here, draw the dot and cross. So what I really should have done, I should have done green crosses, and then the other ones are then dots. That is them, dot and cross. The reason for that is that then you know where the electrons have actually come from. Question number six, list the three main properties of simple covalent. So simple covalent are very, very small things like chlorine or water. And covalent is when you've got two non-metals or even more. Right. So what you've got is you've got low melting and boiling point. Right. Because that means that often means that they're a gas or a liquid. They do not conduct electricity. Right, so think about chlorine, think about fluorine, think about oxygen, right? They don't conduct electricity. Large compounds, right? So some of the bigger ones, so big uh, molecules have higher melting and boiling points. There's three main properties of giant covalent structures. Okay, so giant covalent structures, right? They are they have very high melting and boiling points. Don't ever ever write MPT or BPT because that's proper cheating. They are usually hard and they are often brittle. Okay, so a good example of this could be. Um, silicon dioxide, which is sand. What are the limitations? So what I would normally do is I was going to draw an atom in class. What I'd do is I'd draw that. Okay, because that's kind of the way that it is. However, the limitations are that all particles are shown all particles are shown as spheres and also the fact that spheres are solid right because we know that they're not because we know there's electrons protons and there's neutrons Right, and the fact is that the spheres are drawn as solid and the particles are shown as spheres. And the last one, if you were going to do it completely and utterly correctly, what you should do is you should draw forces, but we have no forces drawn. What do we call electrons in a metal that are free to move? This is a great word. It is delocalized electrons okay so what they do is they are allowed to then move okay so what is an alloy and why is it harder than a pure metal right so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to draw a pure metal there right very very badly drawn okay but the principle is there okay and then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to draw an alloy And then I'm going to draw my metal ones in between. Okay, so what is an alloy? 
An alloy is a mixture of two or more elements, but one must be a metal. Now, why are they harder than normal? What happens is the different sizes disrupt the layers. So basically, these here, they can move over the top of each other very easily. Over here, that layer could move, but then these ones disrupt the actual movement of everything. So this one now is list the seven properties of metals. So the first one is conduct electricity. Okay, that is then all to do with the delocalized electrons. Conduct heat. Okay, they are then very similar. We've then got malleable, which means it's bendy. We've got ductile, which means it's kind of stretchy. You can stretch it. You've got lustrous, which is basically shiny. And then the last two are high, oh, blimey, high melting point and a high boiling point. Question number 12. Give three properties of diamond. All right. So what we've got is we've then got diamond. Now diamond creates some fantastic structure. I'm never going to be able to draw it, but every single carbon in diamond makes four carbon bonds, right, which means it's incredibly strong. So diamond is very hard, okay, which gives it its rigid structure. It has a very high melting point, okay, and that is because of the strong covalent whoop, bonds okay they're very strong these bonds here are incredibly strong it does not conduct electricity and that's because it has no delocalized electrons Question number 13, right, is three properties of graphite. So graphite, right, you think about in the end of your pencil, right, that's basically what graphite is. The first one is they are slippery, and that's because the layers can slide. They have very high melting point again, and that is again because of the covalent bonds are strong and graphite what it is it's kind of hexagons it's like oh, i'm never going to be able to draw a hexagon oh, oh, hexagon six sides and what there is there's loads of them but what they have is they have layers in between right so the slippery bit is where the layers can slide over the top of each other but then they also have very very strong covalent bonds but very weirdly it does conduct electricity and that's because it has delocalized electrons in between the layers. What is an allotrope? Right, an allotrope is a different form of the same element. Okay, and then the examples are um, it's name three other allotropes of carbon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be very sneaky. I'm going to add in a four, right? Because what we've got, the allotropes, there's four basic allotropes of carbon. We've got um, diamond. We've got graphite. We've got graphene, which is one layer of graphite. And then we've also got something called fluorines.